Hi YouTube, Darth here. This week we had quite a few changes on the Battlefield 4 community test environment. Though there was one change that didn't quite make it that I'll talk about anyways because Tig was gracious enough to give us some preview screenshots. But I'll talk about all that and more in this week's CTE Sunday, so let's get started. In preparation for the upcoming night maps, DICE has removed the visual recoil from the IRNV and FLIR optics. If you're not familiar with visual recoil, that's the added animation on optics where the scope would bounce around independently of where the barrel was actually pointing. Now these scopes will operate like any of the other Red Dot, 1X, and 2X scopes in the game and they no longer have visual recoil. While I think that people are going to continue holding onto their Red Dots, this might just push people away from the hollows and medium range scopes as the infrared does make it easier to spot out targets from the surrounding environment. DICE has asked for feedback on this change, so be sure you play with it on the CTE and respond on the CTE forum and on the new Battlefield 4 CTE subreddit. Next up, the scoreboard display for the game saw a small change. Now players that are dead will show up darkened in the scoreboard, so at a glance you'll be able to pick out who from your team and the enemy team is still alive and who is dead. If anybody played Diffuse, I'd say that this would probably be a good bit of information for that game mode, but it's still nice to know. Personally, I still miss the day when I could see each and every player's class and know that I'm on a team full of snipers like in earlier Battlefield titles. Another nice little addition is the added display for the health of the player you're spawning on. Now in the CCTV in the bottom left corner you can see the current health of the player you're about to join. This should let you deal with the situation a little better once you enter the game and maybe not spawn you on that friendly who is about to bite it. Hopefully with the other squad mate spawn changes from the past weeks, this should reduce the number of bad spawns that players are subjected to. One thing that I almost missed from this week was the tweak to optics way when a player is under the effects of suppression. Now the low power sights receive 60% less sway and the medium power sights receive 30% less sway as compared to the live servers. The net effect is that suppression now affects your aim even less so than before. Other than being a momentary nuisance, it seems like suppression has had a lot of its teeth removed since the Battlefield 4 launch. This gradual reduction of all of its effects kind of leaves me wondering why suppression is even still in the game. If you've been waiting for a UCAV and mortar nerf, this is your week. Dice has added a mandatory cooldown to these two weapons whenever a player spawns. Now you can no longer spawn and immediately start using either of these weapons. For the UCAV, it's a 60 second waiting period before you can deploy the weapon, and for the mortar, it's 30 seconds. After playing around with this some, I have to say that this will have the biggest impacts at the start of the rounds and for players that are used to spawning and immediately using a weapon in a reprisal role. I didn't have the opportunity to test this out, but I suspect this also fixes the Commander Crate exploit for the UCAV. Ultimately, this change seems like a good one, even if I was missing my UCAV quite a bit for the quick helicopter takedown. Next up is a small increase to the viewable area of the straw scope. Now there's even more visibility when you're aiming the straw than there was before. Combined with some of the other ease-ups and the pretty hefty nerfs, I'm kind of hoping this puts the weapon in a state where its users will feel like at least there's been a compromise between what needs to happen and what's in the game. It's still definitely plausible to shoot down helicopters, which I still groan about, but it's definitely not as easy as it is on live servers. Finally, DICE couldn't quite get the night maps into the game this week, so as a consolation prize, Tigger uploaded some wonderful screenshots from the Shanghai night map. As you can see from these screenshots, we're going to get a version of Shanghai that isn't quite pitch black like maybe some folks were hoping for, but it's still pretty dark in a lot of areas. Don't forget, we've also been promised some other goodies, so there are some interesting additions that may yet be coming. As with every week, there are a few miscellaneous changes that didn't really feel that big. This week, jet HUD elements were made more visible, squad spawning was tweaked, squad obliteration saw continued changes, there are new impact sounds for hits your soldier takes, affixed to mantle for AMD video cards, DICE implemented a netcode bug fix for incorrect health displays, and there were tweaks to destructible buildings on goal mode and propaganda. So there are a lot of changes on the CTE, coming to the CTE, and we've even got a patch coming up in the next few weeks. What's going to be in that patch? Well, we probably won't be getting some of the features that are currently on the CTE, including some of the prototypes. When we get closer to the actual release date for the winter patch, I'll make a video all about the changes we can expect and what that means. But that's it for the CTE Sunday. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of this week's changes. If you're new around here, please take a moment to check out my channel and consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, YouTube.